The world is changing. I feel it in the air. I see it in the demographics. <laughs> Before we begin this video, we just want to thank everyone who is currently supporting us on Nutrien, Subscribestar, or Patreon. And uh, if you would like to help us continue making this content, any support you can offer is greatly appreciated. It helps us become more independent and less reliant on things outside of our control to give you the content you want. I just noticed something. What did you notice? Oz? Nutrien, Subscribestar, Patreon. Yes. Why do they sound like Transformers? I don't know. <laughs> but Nutrien specifically is to combine the features of YouTube and Patreon. YouTube, Patreon, Utrian. So you're saying for these platforms, there's more than meets the other. Platforms in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you all. Now let's get into the video. Roll out. Welcome back to The Watch. And believe it or not, this is our third attempt at kicking off this video, but we're just going straight into it. We've recently done a video mm. calling out the creators of Rings of Power for being liars and having epic cope, saying, oh no, we're, this isn't going to be political. We want this to be timeless and everything like that. And we shared one article, like interview, with one of the actors on this, who she is just saying incredibly politically driven stuff and revealing herself to be not a very good person, honestly. Mm. But it turns out that rabbit hole goes oh so very deep. You mean that <laughs> hobbit hole? Hobbit hole, hobbit hole. Because uh, a lot of the actors have actually been doing interviews and we are going to go through them and just to show you what they feel is most important about the show, right? Mm. Also contradicting, like, even more... The bullcrap that the showrunner was trying to say that, oh, this isn't going to be political at all, guys. And so we want to collect it all, share it with you, and give our reaction. So I play the character of Princess Deesa. She is the first female dwarf that we will ever see. On they keep repeating that freaking lie. It's an absolute lie. It's She's lie. so full of it, this lady. Shut she might not think it's a lie. She's probably been, you know, you're right. She's probably told this by some of the, like, this is the promotional thing that you've been told to say. This might be what she actually thinks. And she hasn't watched, that means she hasn't watched the other films. That, and that means, <laughs> how, she not, how have all of the, you know, people reminding her, no, it's not the first time, have they all gone over her head, mm. you know? Like... The other thing, right, actors, they're given talking points for promoting the film, mm. all right? We saw this very clearly, well, we see it all the time with film, right? Mm. The, these talking points come from the higher ups, including the showrunners, but also Amazon, the people in charge of marketing, say, mm. this is what we want you to push to uh, uh, advertise and, uh, and promote the film. What I feel confirms this is the fact that she's repeating saying the same thing again and again and again. Mm. So she's basically been given a script that she's just spouting off as what they feel, this is the important part most important stuff of Rings of Power. Which, which wait, makes sense. Wait, wait, wait. No, I, 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 it doesn't make sense. Actors reading a script? Yeah. Come on now, man. I know, crazy, crazy. <laughs> Actors promoting what they're in because they're told to. Uh. Yeah, I, and specific talking points. And so uh, what this also reveals is that this is what the people making the show feel is the most important parts of the show mm. because that's what's been given to the actors to promote. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it's politics! And only certain actors too, not all of them. Yeah. yeah. At least the Eternals was consistent on that. Woo woo woo! Yeah. Holy and, God. and she said on screen, first woman, on... first woman dwarf on screen. <clears throat> no. That was unbelievable cringe. She is the first um, dwarf of colour. No. Kevin Hart is. <laughs> <laughs> Thing is though, I'm pretty sure they're pro very likely black dwarves and other fantasy properties and stuff that appear somewhere. Mm, I mean, yeah. even even in Dungeons and Dragons, there's a race of darker skinned dwarves, I believe. Yeah, yeah, and there's like the the there's the uh, they're like the dark elf counterpart for dwarves, mm -hmm. and they're like they're cool and like metal dwarves. You yeah, know? all edgy. Uh, wh yeah. Whatever you think, like it's not like the dark saber and then yeah. you've got the drow elves, the whole edgy elves, and then which I think d black dwarves will be cooler than white dwarves. <laughs> not gonna lie. It does sound cool. Yeah, probably. Be able to host this moment and make this huge franchise accessible for all the generations across the screen. I can't, like, it's the same thing. We recovered this and the other, but it's so racist what she's saying here, that if you do not see yourself in the thing, in another piece of media, you will not be able to connect to it and it's not accessible to you because mm. you can't connect with people of other races. I mean, like, 
you just have to be able to understand to connect mm -hmm. you know that's why we can all like foreign mm -hmm. films if we see the subtitles but mm -hmm. take that away we don't get it right mm -hmm. and she's just spouting it again and again but this is approved by amazon this one is an iconic moment for me and and hopefully for the world to draw in the new fans and know that it is drawing new fans that wouldn't be able to access it otherwise she's basically saying that black people weren't able to appreciate lord of the rings until now it's so racist but also for the world I know. She thinks she's bringing the world in. But wouldn't it just be a particular part of the world that you're talking about? She says it in an interview and every time she appears she's spouting the same bullcrap. This is in the Comic Con section. I know, I know. Yeah, they got he's Stephen such Colbert. such a fake nerd. Colbert, oh, I can't see. ...to have something you love as much as the Lord of the Rings and that entire world taken on by someone new. And I've gotten to meet showrunners J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay struck by their sincerity and their love of this world. So I'm going to bring them out here in just a moment and ask them simply what- <gasps> They love the property because it's a tool for them to push their own agenda. That's yep. what they love about it. Yep. Uh, all the problematic elements, oh no, they don't like that, and they despise Tolkien because they are literally doing the opposite of what Tolkien wanted. I have to disagree. I don't think they despise Tolkien. And I think they actually probably do like Lord of the Rings, but there's cognitive dissonance surrounding it because they have to put their message no, in. But see, they despise the philosophy Tolkien espoused and believed and put into Lord of the Rings, so therefore they despise him. I disagree. They might not even know about it. I think, mm -hmm. I think that like people like Lord of the Rings for a reason, because that that philosophy comes across in the theme, right? Of like, you know, friendship, uh, sacrifice for self, fighting for things that are good. But they're so, co it's, it's cognitive dissonance because they have all this other stuff that's been forced into the head and manipulated the way mm. they think. And that's why it's manipulating the uh, good. They you know? might not believe that they do, but by their actions, they do. Uh, I don't know, I'll, I'll play devil's advocate on that one. What is the story you are telling? Who are these characters? And how does all of this fit into the lore of Tolkien? It doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> and what I love about the writers on this show is that they have given every woman on the show, every female character, such agency. We don't serve the men around us. We have a storyline in our own right. Okay, what about the makeup designers and, and co <laughs> costume artists and stuff like that? Do they... Do they uh, serve the men around? Yeah, but they're not seen, so therefore they're not important. Ones. So agenda driven. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Modern politics, uh, modern, not reflecting the modern world. All right? This is supposed to be timeless and stuff like that. And guess what? There are situations in the past where uh, sometimes men served women and sometimes women served men. I bet, I bet, I'll put money on it that there are males who don't have agency in this that are subservient to female characters, mm. but not the women. Do you know what you call it when one group serves one group and then another ser group serves another group and they do that collectively throughout history? They call that cooperation. Mm. <laughs> but look at Lord of the Rings, the original trilogy. There were mm. the women in there. Arwen uh, didn't listen to her father. She had her own agency mm. and she wanted to pursue her heart, which was awesome. Uh, Arwen didn't listen to her uncle, the king, who mm. literally said, I don't want you to be in this war, go home. And she's like, no. Arwen? I thought uh, sorry, uh, Eowyn, my bad. Eowyn. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, even, well, I don't know, Galadriel, she's literally like a leader in the elves, so mm. she has agency. But you know what? They didn't make a thing out of it. They mm -hmm. weren't trying to say, the women have agency in Lord of the Rings, so therefore you should watch it. And this is the best part of the show. It's like, no, no, this is an awesome show yeah. with awesome characters. Go watch. Eowyn, a woman human being, mm -hmm. literally killed the, the Witch King. King. I am no man. Yeah, and it was the most badass scene. <laughs> and not only was it badass on its face, but it was built up to be badass as well. And mm. no one was like, oh, that's just a feminist scene right there. No one did that. To this day, no one does. And I'm yeah. usually willing to go back and do stuff like that. <laughs> they all have really good lines. Like, uh, if you want him, come and claim, come and him. claim him. Bloody hell, that intro where they introduce um, Arwen in the first one and Frodo like turns and looks at her and she's like made of light. Mm. That Every <laughs> single time that hits me in the feels. Oh, bloody hell, that's uh, But now, that because I want to politicise it, this is this is what they're trying to say is the most important parts of the show. She also taps into her inner lioness, and I, as an activist, uh, as a, a long-time human rights activist from my homeland, Iran... How successful has your activism <laughs> in, uh, in Iran been? And, uh, and, like, 
she's an activist. They're like, this is, these are the people who they have that they hide, that they want on the show, activists with a political axe to grind. Mm, you're an actor, not an actorvist. Yeah, we don't freaking care about your politics. You're an actor, you're a dancing monkey, entertain us. Yeah. All right? If we wanted to listen to your political hot takes, we would have gone to try and listen to politics, maybe have a podcast on the side or something like that. But... Usually, if, even when actors try and do that, no one listens to them because they're so crap. Tapped into what I believe is, um, thank you. Um. This, how, I don't know. She didn't even say anything of uh, Virgil. I'm a political activist. Uh, I fight for my country, Iran. And yeah. <laughs> and also, yeah. <laughs> Good restraint there, Oz. <laughs> I, I'm friends. I'm friends with many uh, Muslims. Hmm. I just want to make that clear. Uh. Thank you. <laughs> I tapped into what I believe women are doing for my homeland um, in playing this character in yeah. sort of liberating and redeeming the Southlanders who back. You know. But if a man, a couple of men, helped him out. <laughs> Uh, they'd probably be a lot more successful than they currently are right now. Just because, like, you're going to need people to fight this battle. Mm -hmm. And, you know, mm. if, it's a, if it's a crowd of women but versus all men cops with water cannons, <laughs> who's going to win that? But if it's a crowd of men with, with bricks and, you know, shields... But hey, like, it, she's out of context. She's trying to fight for women's rights in Iran, by the sound of it. And, okay, there's a good... No, no, she's out of goal. Iran. She's out of Iran? She 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 she's not in Iran. Yeah. So she's, she's actually so really what what is she doing just by saying things in, from another country? Well, to be fair, there's that lady who escaped North Korea. Yeah, I know, and mm. uh, and so raising a voice sometimes can create public awareness. And to be yes. fair, yeah, to be fair, I'll backtrack. If she did that in Iran, she'd probably be killed. So <laughs> stay the hell out of Iran and keep doing what you're doing, okay? But, <laughs> yeah, but we want to hear about Lord of the Rings, not bloody. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, Talk about your character. We wanted to hear Lord of the Rings, and now it's just like. I think, I like, compare this show to Wheel of Time, mm -hmm. I think Rafe Judkins genu genuinely doesn't care about Wheel of Time. Mm -hmm. But I think the creators of this show the do like Lord of the Rings, but they have this political stuff that either they're forced to or they want to put in. See, see, to me, that means they think that they do, but if they truly cared about it, they would understand what it actually is. And they wouldn't be... Well, people can hold two ideas in their head at once that conflict. It's called... Yeah, yeah I, I know. That's what, And I'm calling him out on that. I'm yeah. saying if you truly cared, you wouldn't have that... Con um, uh, you know, dissonance um, uh, about it because you would not be co-opting it and injecting all this political crap and misrepresenting it and changing it just to appease political woke ideology. ideology. And so, no, I, 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 they don't truly care about it. They might think they're doing good. Who knows? Oh, yeah, they definitely think they do. They think they are they God's gift doing... and salvation to this troubled world because everyone's racist and homophobic and mm. sexist and all that stuff and... They need to change Lord of the Rings to push those messages to show everyone how racist they are because now there's black elves and black dwarves in it. You know, mm. because remember, it wasn't accessible to black people because there wasn't black people in it before. Male dwarf depicted on screen. Oh yeah, he knows the lore as well, doesn't he? She's such a fake fan. And again, that's a line that was given to him, I bet, where they said, you need to ask her about being the first female, and he's reading it, or you can like, yeah, look and look down. Mm. Um, to be fair, he might still be a fan and not know everything about it. Oh, this one's pretty obvious. Like, you see, if you've watched The Hobbit, you see the race of dwarven people being expelled from Erebor. I certainly do. Thank you so much. And thank you all for such a... Um, Lovely response. Tell me a little moment. bit about... It's a real moment. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about Disa. Which... So, I don't know, like, she's getting cheered more than a lot of the other actors for... For work points. Disa, the first female dwarf that we have ever seen on any screen. And they are spouting it again and again and again. It's coming up like they think this is what makes Rings of Power good or important. If you repeat of the lie... Of course it is. Mm. There's nothing else. Yeah. There's nothing. This is the. In fact, this is the first. I think this is. I wasn't going to watch this before, but now that I've heard that, <laughs> I think I'm going to go watch it now. Wait, now that you know for certain, this will be the first movie with women in it, or TV show. Mm-hmm. Yes. Wow. That's how stupid people, the greatest thing people are. Surprisingly, a lot of people are. Some people are. Yeah. <laughs> oh, these people. I think this is so great, and it, this really uh, gives me. 
Eternals vibes. The only mm. thing that the actors were able to say what was great about the Eternals was how diverse it was. Not that it's a great movie, great story, great action, or anything like that. It's so diverse. Well, to be fair, they couldn't lie to us, could they? <laughs> well, lying, but but they're actors. Um, the first female dwarf that we have ever seen in the works of Tolkien. See, they don't applaud that one because they know it's a lie. Yeah. Uh, and I have the honour to host that revolutionary moment. Revolutionary! Oh yeah, there's a revolution going She's on, all right. so sniffing her own farts. Like, get off your horse, lady. You're a friggin' actor. This is a crappy show. We've seen short black women in fantasy before. Mm -hmm. uh, Yvette Nicole Brown as Shirley in Community Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She mm -hmm. was a dwarf named Zippity-Doo. <laughs> But, like, for people to call us racist because we say that her race and gender aren't the most important things to us. Yeah. Her being an interesting character for us to follow mm. a journey of is the most important thing to us. For her to have a starting point and an ending point and an arc that is emotionally satisfying, that's what's the most important to us. And every other factor doesn't really matter if, if it doesn't, you know, as long as it fits inside that story. And we're racist? Here's the thing, Oz. Here, okay. There are some stories mm. that actually... To be told, in, like, the, to cover the most important aspects and the uh, strongest aspects of the story, should only focus on men or women, women, depending on the type of story, right? Wait, wait, wait. So, so For instance, if I was sharing a story about a battle of World War Two, mm. right? It would be far more appropriate to focus on the people who are actually in the battle. Yeah. The men, okay? The soldiers who are actually in the thick of it and injecting it because we need representation, diversity, just throw strong women in. Honestly, is can insult the sacrifice that those brave men did in World War II. When it comes to Lord of the Rings, this is a story about warfare and battle and everything like that. And what would more naturally happen from a story like that is that men would end up being the forefront main characters that are playing and fighting in that conflict. If you wanted to be true to the fundamental realities of human nature, all right? Mm. And so it's actually not beyond the pale for someone to say, this is the type of story in which women shouldn't be featured as much. If we're going to be talking about conflict and who's fighting and stuff, and there will be stories in which men shouldn't be featured enough, that tells a story that is more stereotypically a woman's story, mm. right? But this is not necessarily a woman's story. This is actually a story that both men and women can find great value and upliftment in watching, even if it's a story mainly about men. thing, I don't necessarily agree. Like, say World War II. Mm -hmm. Even then, it would, like... There were sacrifices women did in World War II. Yeah, have you seen Band of Brothers? Yeah, yeah. So, well, I, not I, the whole I, thing. A chunk of it, yeah. There's an episode which focuses entirely around the medic in um, mm -hmm. the Battle of the Bulge in uh, uh, Belgium. Mm -hmm. And he is he's all over the place, right, zipping around. And mm -hmm. there's a point where he has to take a ton of wounded men back to a town. And in mm -hmm. this town where they're getting all the wounded men in a church, there is a female doctor. Yeah, great. And I agree. The I whole agree. story follows because... her. And she died from being bombed, mm -hmm. you know? So, like... Yeah, that, if, that's not forcibly ejecting, injecting oh, of course yeah, no, representation. It was a, it was that a was telling episode. a story naturally and everything like that. And there will be natural ways mm. for women to appear in a story about warfare and conflict if you're doing, you know, even a fantasy one like Lord of the Rings. And those ones usually ring more true and authentic, okay? Mm. Instead of forcefully injecting, making women far more masculine and piss and vinegar warriors like Gladriel, right? Where now it seems like it's pandering, it doesn't have that ring of authentic, authentic truth about what actually happens in the real world when battle breaks out and there's conflict and stuff. Send us off in a bit of a, a tangent, but I just wanted to point out that that is actually a deeper truth about something. Sometimes there is a story in which it's less appropriate to have lots of male representation in, mm. and there are stories which is less appropriate to have lots of female representation in. That's reality. She is a necessity, and in, in we get to see the dwarven culture for the first time, you know? Get to see the dwarven culture for the first time? Where the hell did that come from? We've seen it a few times. I think she's just what? saying stuff by, at, at this point. I know, she's just now reaching for anything to get... What's she going to say next? Me. This is the first mm. time we're seeing Lord of the Rings on screen. Yeah, wow. I, I wanted to see the photo of the costume. Mm. Khazad Doom is alive and in its prime. And, um... So she, now she's trying to say that the first time we saw dwarven dwarves living in dwarven places doing dwarven things. It's like, look, we got snippets of it and stuff. Well, there's a lot of it in uh, The Hobbit. Yeah. Tons in The Hobbit, yeah. Mm. For any great success story of any world or race there are females and uh, here i am <laughs> there's men too but look she there she is if she's represented well so so 
as a character. Yes, for any great success story, there are women too. There's men and women, yeah. There's men as well. Um, but sometimes, depending on what type of story it is and the success achieved, men play a much bigger role. And Depending conversely, sometimes women play a much bigger role. Okay, we like. In fact, I don't even think I. I don't think I want a story that doesn't represent, like, because obviously, never. Mind. I just want to say I. I don't know if I've ever seen a story or want to see a story that doesn't have women in it in at least some stage. I'll be fine there, with it if it's a good story. I don't. I don't need yeah, men but, or women in a thing to be good. But can you think of a story where there aren't any women in it that you've ever read or seen or watched? If I go back far enough, I think I could. I don't think I have. I think even, like, war movies have at least had women... Twelve in... Angry Men? Twelve Angry Men. Is there a woman what in Predator? Do, well, what do you think they're angry about? Yeah, there's a... Uh, they capture her, she's one of the rebels. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, but definitely there's a thing with no women, and there's probably a film out there with no men in Maybe uh, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. But it has Hugo Weaving in it. Mm. Um, and if it's good, I... I don't care. Yeah, I give it as good... No men, no women. Just give me a good story. Uh, I to say it must need it because thing is inherently sexist tone to me. Really? And yeah. I'm not saying it needs it, but I don't think I've seen it, and I don't think I want to see it because I I don't know. I like the it, it's an important interplay. I think. Orpheth, I have to start with you because I love your name. Thank you. Orpheth. I love. This feels like watching um the Hunger Games. You know those interviews in the Hunger Games oh, it really that are does. completely You're unreal. Right. <laughs> This fake presenter that's just pandering massively to both the crowd and, you know... Mm. Mm. And he turns when he goes, no, no, that's all, that's all mm. they need. Are you wearing your flames tonight? For the showrunners, I'm wondering if you can address any of the controversy surrounding the crest on Galadriel's armor. <laughs> Tell us about the controversy. <laughs> the, um, the reports are... Oh, it's all. Um, the reports are that the, the crest on her armor is... Um, from the House of Feanor, and uh, Galadriel would never wear the crest of the House of Feanor. Text. Oh, that poor guy! It's like, it's from here to Galadriel. I was looking at the face. So the crest is apparently from the House of Feanor, another mm -hmm. elf, who was he was seen as like the the elf of elves. He's a he's like mm -hmm. a man's man for elves, right? Mm -hmm. And Galadriel, she's got this power where she looks at you, she she knows who you are. And mm -hmm. she saw that this guy is he's flawed. He's a bad guy. Mm -hmm. And and he, she was like one of the only people who saw it. So she would, when, uh, remember how Gimli said, can I have one of your strands of hair? Mm -hmm. gave, him, gave him three yeah. to a dwarf mm -hmm. she just met. Feanor asked her for three strands from her head. And she said, no. Nah. Oh. And so she gave uh, Gimli three. <laughs> that's, that's like a 4,000 year old burn, yeah. you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, she would, okay. She would not wear it. In context, yeah, that makes it a big deal that she'd yeah. be wearing his crest. And also, she doesn't need to wear armour, basically, because... She, she doesn't need to be a warrior. She has all the well, power she, and influence already. Yeah, she's not a warrior, but she, she does destroy, using mm. her magic, yeah. she tears down entire castles and flattens out entire mm. regions, right? But she doesn't need it. One, uh, she doesn't yet in this, but in this age she gets it. She gets the Ring of Adamant, uh, mm. of Adamantine or something like that, which makes her just a... Force, like yeah, strong in every regard, <laughs> and they have stripped that of her to just make her act more like a man, take away her power. And I will say though, if once she gets the ring, she never wears armor again, that will be good. Mm -hmm. But also, the crest of Feanor, she wouldn't accept a gift. And they say in this, oh, it was a gift. Says you. <laughs> Great. Screw you, Colbert. That, was that so guy. Mean. Yeah, I know. He may, he puts him on the spot. The and guy he feels uh, obviously awkward as hell. Shy and embarrassed. Exactly. And then he decides to burn him on the you friggin' jerk. And uh, and no, 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 not says you. Says Tolkien. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> she would wear the house of Fenway, but not necessarily. The house is from the house of Fenway. I don't want to get, you know, Silmarillion on you. Difficult. <laughs> But it's his house. He's, it's Feanor. It's Feanor, the elf of elves. I can actually give an answer. No, thank, thank you for the Sorry, Thank you, sir. Stephen Colbert. What is the crest? Can you tell us what the crest is on her armor? We would need Kate Holly here, who has done a wonderfully deep dive with every single filigree, every single crest, every single uh, detail, and, and uh, the things we've, we've discussed at, at length. But we need here to, her to speak more. Uh... Dude, yeah, can... Well, remember, these are the guys that fired the first consultant. Was it? I'm not sure if it was the first, but one of the main consultants. Mm. And one of the reasons it came out is that he was objecting to the changes to the law, and then they just fired him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So they don't care about this. Roger. Give a little context, though. It, Please. Um, something I don't believe the internet has considered yet is um, it's not actually her armor, it's a gift yeah. from someone else. This is true. What? Okay, that's an exclusive. Yes, ma'am. Were we? Hello. So, the, the, yeah, the next question would be why is she wearing someone else's armor if she, like. But uh, she wouldn't accept, she's not on gift giving terms with Feanor. Yeah. Anyway. What is the, if you have one, do you have a favorite, uh, I'll say, canonical event? Um, and it, it's, it's the, the downfall of Numenor. Um, you know, this, this, uh, watching this, this kingdom in which there's this uh, factionalization, uh, the, the, you know, these, these groups that uh, you know, are, are pulling apart the, the, the fiber of Numenorean society, it seems, it's so timely. Um, not for our, just for our culture, but for any culture around the world, we see all these divisions happening, and uh, tragedy can be so um, deeply cathartic for us to, to experience and, and see what are the hopes people have, what are the mistakes they make, why do things go wrong? Um, and so I think that story of the downfall of Numenor, Numenor is deeply painful, but also um, maybe can be helpful because maybe there's something we can learn from it. What he's saying here is that the downfall of civilization, stuff like that, is thinking that the conflict that we have in the world at the moment, right, is uh, a... Uh, similarity a precursor to the downfall of Numenor and that you know there's a bit of a, a, an allegory to be said there and what's interesting right is that he saw he has read Tolkien right the, this the downfall of Numenor and then he has made that connection Tolkien never wrote Numenor as with intention for people to see a connection between the downfall of Numenor and the pro pro problems in our society in the modern day because he wasn't alive in our modern day, he couldn't mm. see it, okay? Mm. This is why he was against allegory because he wanted people to interpret things however they, way they want. He hasn't interpreted that, Tolkien was happy with that, but now he's taking that and making a show based on that interpretation, forcing allegory onto it, which Tolkien was expressly against. Thing is though, sometimes someone makes a, a work of art that literally predicts events. This has happened many, many times. Mm -hmm. And so if, if you can, like, is it coincidence? Is it a certain uh, rule in reality that, that uh, Tolkien has tapped into, mm. or are we just seeing things collectively if we actually make these uh, comparisons? No, the way that you do it is tell the story of Numenor as accurate to the way Tolkien described it as possible, mm. not with intent to make it reflect modern day things. It's like, oh, if we tweak this thing and just make this character re like just act a little bit the same as this person in real life and to make those references, mm. that's forcing allegory into it. The downfall of Numenor was literally uh, the god of Middle-earth, of Arda, uh, destroying Numenor. He literally sunk it, collapsed it. It's the Atlantis for, the, for them breaking the rule. <laughs> of, he, said, he said, don't go there. And they went there and then God's like, okay, so, and there's another question. Sorry. Does that reflect? Does that reflect reality accurately? Because is we Australia deny. Is Australia gonna sink? No, <laughs> but like, do we? Because we break from God's rules, and people have been punished for that. Entire civilizations have. That's uh, a connection that I would see in it, but that's the purpose of it. Where Tolkien loved people seeing connections in his work, but what he hated was then people saying this is the meaning of the work. But that my point is, is the mm. connection that we see is formed because there's something true. Yeah, yeah, that's that, fine. That's, yeah, okay. And that's my point. There are characters played by actors who will be out here in just a moment who are not canonical to Tolkien. Okay, and that must be one of the the greatest challenges. How do you to you know? There's people of color. And uh, uh, oh, not half what's half what's are canonical, but I'm not sure they're canonical to the times. But yeah, people mm -hmm. of color. You fill out that world with characters that are implied. They're implied cultures that you're drawing from. Implied cultures. What? Oh, that's a <laughs> really that implying. Show me the source. It's a it's a it's a very. It's like there there are elves that were called silver elves. Mm. It's very explicit. Yeah, Tom, but it's very explicit in the separation of the. But because, you know, we, and there's not massive, and this is like, he didn't say they weren't black, so therefore it's implied. It's like, all right, yeah. he didn't say that there aren't aliens they did up a thing that attacked and destroyed Numenor at one point either, because, he but it was implied, come friggin' off. specifically say they didn't have iPhones. Y yeah. This is such cope. Gosh, what utter bullcrap. But they're not necessarily described to the depth that you're going to represent them. <laughs> not necessarily. This is literally that he didn't say explicitly they were there so we could do it. It's literally that. I can't believe it. Loopholes. It's, give him iPhones then. All bets are off. <laughs> <laughs> do you <we> funny? <laughs> Aragorn gets a call from like Treebit. 
They're taking the hobbits to Isengard, by the way. <laughs> oh, cheers, mate. This is this is when those comments under the um, uh, trailer, the the Lord, the Rings of Power trailer, where it's like, I really loved it when you know Gandalf <laughs> came in and attacked Lord Vader, and they said we need to go to. You know, to Hogwarts. To Hogwarts uh, yeah. to destroy the USS Enterprise. <laughs> that was the best moment. It'd be funny if, uh, to get Sauron's attention, uh, Aragon FaceTimes him like, long have you hunted me, here's the sword. <laughs> Tolkien didn't say it was it, so therefore it's implied. I'm, I'm still stuck on this, that this is their, their bold face using that as the excuse. He didn't oh. say there weren't Black Elves. But just wait, but just wait. There's, again, contradictions, contradictions. Mm. Um, what guidance did you take for those characters' creations? Well, so we had the, the privilege of working with uh, Tolkien scholars um, like Tom Shippey and, you know, amazing, like, linguists. Except you, what about the guy you fired because you're breaking the law? Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> nowadays, what is considered by... A Tolkien scholar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a Tolkien scholar. By the, the establishment would consider a Tolkien scholar, the people making essays like, uh, was uh, Saruman uh, the queer of Middle-earth? And why is he virtuous because of that? Mm -hmm. The guy who wanted to enslave these half are the, world. The, the scholars. That yeah, are just yeah, yeah, yeah. Injecting and making up bullcrap. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the the Indian representation of ideas in Tolkien's works. There was one of them like mm -hmm. that. Kid you not. Uh, trans people in Middle Earth. Where are they? <laughs> Here they are. These are the scholars. These are the scholars. Yeah. Uh, and uh, also had uh, lore masters that were part of our writers' room that would always you know be be there to help us. Only the ones that, of course told you what you wanted, because when they told you something you didn't want, you fired them! It's on yeah. record! You know, make sure we are, um, you know, really honouring the, both the letter and the spirit of Legendarium, but um, Tolkien gave us all these amazing clues um, about cultures in the Second Age. Uh, you know... <laughs> clues! It's like, we're just not gonna take what is written and, uh, you know, wow, we're gonna go in clues. Sylvan Elve. Well, is there... Does, does, does it specifically say silver elves can't be black? It doesn't say. Here's the clue. Mm, yeah, yeah, wisest and fairest of all beings. <laughs> Concerning hobbits, he talks about the ancestors of hobbits, um, where there's uh, stores, phallohides, and, and harfoots. And uh, he gives us you know, just a couple tantalizing paragraphs about harfoots. But then you, you take those clues in there and you say, okay, cool, what kind of society you know, would... Uh, he talks about their wandering days. So you say, okay, imagine these sort of migratory, like, you know, wandering, like, hobbits. Like, you know, what would they be like? I would want to read up on this just to, because they twist so much. I've already, we know there are other people who have caught them out on this twisting narrative and everything like that mm. to find out, okay, how prevalent were, you know, say the Harfoots and these ancestors of the, of the Hobbits. hobbits. Because at the moment, they're basically just making them Hobbits, not necessarily ancestors that, you know, that we don't see a consistent evolutionary chain, mm. mainly also because... Remember, Halfwood doesn't say that they are, they're not black, but later generations of hobbits certainly have a, an ethnic consistency to them, let's just say. And mm -hmm. so if these are the ancestors, what happened along the line, you know? Hobbits in the Third Age, how are they really different? Um, and, you know, so like piecing those clues together and then also doing what Tolkien himself did, which would be go back to uh, our world and look at the heroic sagas and myths and stories um, and draw inspiration from them to sort of help... Uh, Oh, so making up new crap. That's what they're saying. We're, we're, we're filling in the gaps. We're doing Tolkien's work for him. Instead of just taking Tolkien's work, we specifically want to find areas in which there is less explanation for so we can make up our own crap. We don't want to give you a story that's Middle Earth. We want to make up our own version of Middle Earth by exploiting areas in which... You Did know. he say, I thought he said, look at our world. Did he say, look at our world or our stories? Because can we, can we take it back a little bit? Our he, he world, and our but stories, then he said our stories. legends, myths, blah, blah, blah. But they can be true heroic, heroic sagas. Is he talking about the stories or mm. what actually happened? Sagas and myths and stories um, and draw inspiration from them to sort of help uh, bring a verisimilitude to the characters he was creating. So. But he's basically trying to say that we're making up crap in areas in which Tolkien, you Left know, blank space. Um, purposely so they can inject their own stuff and then they're trying to justify it oh we did the same methodology of Tolkien by taking inspiration from these things it's like you're not Tolkien mate but how often is it in someone else's story where someone gets it and then they try to fill in the blank spaces how often is it that it's satisfying for anyone I'm not saying it can't be done satisfyingly Me neither. but what that has to happen is that the writer needs to be usually as talented as the original mm. and even more but when you have writers who are less talented it's always worse. Mm -hmm. And Tolkien was one of the most talented writers. To ever exist. To ever exactly. Work, yeah. And to think that they could do, that their 
filled in injected crap is going to be nearly as satisfying as Tolkien stories, the stuff he did flesh out, is hubris beyond belief and not what the Tolkien fan base wants. Yep. Not what we want. We want Tolkien stories, not your interpretation of the areas of Middle Earth that you feel you can take liberties with. In fact, Tolkien was so good that he's literally the benchmark for fantasy. Mm -hmm. We, one, always back to Tolkien, and two, when Tolkien was silent, we tried to invent in a, as Tolkienian a way as possible. <laughs> See, invent as Tolkienian a way is like really, you're not Tolkien. And so to think that your invention, even trying to copy Tolkien's work, is going to be equivalent as satisfying, hubris, beyond belief. It's like, oh my goodness. Go back to the book, go back to the book, go back to the book. Yeah. We, 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 do that, they, they didn't do that, but that is the it's, correct response. Yeah, but it, they're lying. This is bold-faced lying. Well, that's the thing. I think he's telling the truth, and he's saying what should have been said, <laughs> yeah. what should have been done. They had two criteria for every single person we brought into this, this show. One is they had to be an excellent performer. So you're going to be with these people for a 50-hour journey. And we knew that from the beginning, that this was going to be a 50-hour story. So we said, we want people to be able to fall in love with these people and have amazing actors. And then two, we, they, we had to be able to look in their eyes and say, do they have Middle Earth in them? What? No. Well, I don't. I have blue eyes, though. What airy, fairy, touchy-feely <laughs> bullcrap is this? Do you have any... Do I have any? Yes, you do. Do you want to know how I can say that? Because <laughs> there is the... Look at all the actors in Lord of the Rings. So many of them have blue eyes. Like, to me, you, what the unspoken thing is they look in their eyes and say, are they activists like us and make sure they agree with this politics? Mm. And because uh, the actors all seem to be of a very consistent political leaning so far, but that is to Hollywood generally. I wonder if there's a single actor there that's even mildly conservative. If they, if they were smart, they'd keep their mouth shut. <laughs> they, they probably have to, yeah, yeah. to keep their job. Um, but great actors is like, like, so far these actors, as people, a lot of them when they open their mouths, sound like jerks, like ideologically possessed, political acts to grind, you know, Mm. If they didn't have it, if they were excellent, then they, they didn't get the part. But if, if they had that special thing... It's the dwarf who's doing the political axe grinding. I know, and ax, what the hell <laughs> makes them the, the arbiters of Middle-earthness? Who the hell are they to determine that? That's why my argument is uh, eventually there, there hits a point where the story doesn't belong to the people who own the rights. Mm. And it's when they disrespect yeah, completely. Yeah, but I know some of the, like... M Biggest Lord of the Rings fans, right? Mm. You could say Middle Earth the core. Look at Gary from Nerd Rodica, right? Mm. And if this guy looks at, you know, Gary, do you think he's going to see Middle Earth in his Like, you know he won't because they're driven by pol politics. And, and what does that even mean? Like, if I yeah. if I look at someone from China who's, a, you know, Asian, Chinese, has all the things, and I, I, I see China in you, like, just think <laughs> about how... Just, yeah, that's I'll, messed up on multiple levels. So is. messed up, it always... It does make sense, but in a messed up way. But to say, I see Middle Earth and, in you, a place that doesn't really exist... It makes sense for people like this. Yeah. Who look in people's eyes and try and ascribe identity like, just by looking at someone. If I found someone who accurately, like, had Middle Earth in them and said, hey... I see Middle Earth in you. Do you know what they'd say? Oh, thanks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> Talk about, oh, hang on, they're trying to be so inclusive and everything like that that they literally say they rejected people just based on the look in their eye. Yeah, that's inclusive. You bloody right. Can you imagine, like, if... if and, and it's on that line. It's in the same vein. If, like, they were going to have, like, a flash forward to Frodo, right? And they, they had Elijah Wood come in, like... <laughs> Look, you're great. You played Frodo really well, but I'm just you just don't have it in your eye. I mean, he's seeing because Elijah, he has those eyes though. It's something in his mm. eyes. Piercing. It's just piercing. It's, blue it's eyes. entrancing, but it's not Middle Earth. It's something else. Yeah. <laughs> Before you judge someone, right, whether they deserve to be involved in Middle Earth, remove the beam from your own eye. This is truly amazing to me, though. They are endorsing judging people just by the look in their eye, like. Mm. Oh my goodness. And also, if they were going like, to do that. Stink eye? Like, oh, no, Forrest Whitaker eye. No, no. How would they feel if they got rejected to be the showrunners and they asked why? I was like, it's not your credentials, why? We just didn't like the look in your eye. Mm. They would flip out. Weeks. To be fair, mm -hmm. they are casting. They, they're supposed to be discriminative when casting That's for all. roles. So if they see a look in the eye and they yeah, say, but usually, I pick that one. Usually it would be for like quality. Not just well, they said quality. They said quality first, and then they looked for. The no, but they said they there were people, were great actors that way. They they said no to. You know? They did say that. They said even if they are a great actor, but they didn't have it like they look like they had Middle Earth in them. 
Sorry. <laughs> it's just amazing. The and and it is, they're saying this for virtue, and it just... This is like, to me, face-off, where it's like, these guys, all their claiming for diversity and representation, everything like that, are as discriminatory, even probably more so, as anyone on the planet by what they're saying. I tell you, the best casting I've ever seen was uh, the Nicolas Cage movie where he played himself. Perfect <laughs> casting. Perfect. I don't see Middle Earth in these guys. You don't deserve your position because of my arbitrary standard. You claim that authority, why can't I claim it? Don't worry, so it's inside them. Then th that, that's what we got. So 20 and, they, and they all do, and we're really excited for you to meet them. We're really, really proud of this cast and the work they've done. Uh, they have Middle Earth inside. So is it just like a really small book? <laughs> Painful. Now, I would ass these guys do sit as well, like they have something up their ass. I, <laughs> I, I think it's their own head, though. Yeah, I wouldn't have picked a book. <laughs> they're so used to sniffing people's parts, they're getting it way too close. It'd be funny if they're like, wait, let me just uh, reference a, a book, a page. <laughs> so, in this page. <laughs> what if they have the book on a USB? Ah. Mm. Well, they're not robots. Come on, be realistic, Claudia. <laughs> <laughs> they could have a port up there. I think you're going to fall in love with them. Why do some elves have short hair? Patrick. So... <laughs> <laughs> if you answer, like, what would he realistically say? The honest answer is, oh, we chose, uh, like, flip the question, why didn't you include it, right? Because it's, it's the same way. Um, oh, because they don't represent the character, the characters or races that Tolkien put in his book. Mm -hmm. That's the honest answer, if you flip it, it's the same way, right? But for... The reason he can't answer it is because if he does answer it, he has to admit we didn't follow what Tolkien said. Just like any race of many, many beings, don't all look the same all the time, especially not over thousands of years. And in the books, it sure felt like that's what Tolkien was saying too. So, yeah, but but there is there I, is. I don't know. Tolkien was actually pretty clear about describing the races as representative in appearance. Yeah, uh, I, I, it seems Elves like. Elves are tall. Dwarves are short. Yep. Hobbits are shorter. Yep. Yeah. And uh, 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 orcs have beady red eyes. And one of the actual characteristics tree about... Tree people, they're trees. Uh, one of the, they're all trees. On. One of the clear characteristics of races... Oh, sorry, of, of Tolkien's description of the races is that they have qualities that are not represented at all. You don't find an elf as short as a, as a dwarf or a mm. hobbit. That's like explicitly outside of well, their racial description. Especially not over thousands of years, and in the books, it sure felt like that's what Tolkien was saying. Uh, elves, like any race of many, many beings, don't all look the same all the time. That's not what he's asking, though. But there's this. So, common so the thing is, though, look, could an elf shave his hair off? Uh, have we Absolutely ever... not. It's yeah, impossible. But... They know that's not the underlying question here. Yeah. Yeah, the question is about the specific elf that has short hair and they're trying to sidestep yeah, yeah. what they people have actually been bringing a up. Wig. But the foundation of the question is, he says, why do some elves have short hair? And the thing that informs that is, in Lord of the Rings, there are elves that... Elves, I don't think there is elves that have short hair. They yeah, have I long don't hair. think of a description. Like, it might be elves black or it might be brown or, uh, or blonde, mm -hmm. but they're long, right? Uh, and so the question is, why has this differed from what's in the books? That's mm. the real question. Yeah. And that's why I talk about the race. Anyway. And um, well, his answer is that to make it essentially be more like the real world, because just like the real world, because listen to what he says. He's like any race of many, many beings. Just like any race of many, many beings. So he's, he's equating that to the races of, of Earth, the mm. real world. It's like, no, that's not what Tolkien, you know, was explicit about. A lot of races looking very much the same. Mm, like you could do it with the so wizards. So much so to the point that it was hard to pick out a female dwarf from a male dwarf because they look so much the same. But like uh, you could do it with the wizards, like the mm -hmm. Maya, because they all, all the Maya look very different, mm -hmm. right? Um, like uh, Gandalf is a really tall old dude, mm -hmm. right? Uh, he, he, he was told to be like that. Mm -hmm. And then there's uh, the, the brown wizard, who's mm -hmm. a really short dude, mm -hmm. right? Like almost as short as a dwarf. Mm -hmm. So you can do it with them because their race is so limited and like so magical, it can be anything. Mm -hmm. But with races that aren't immortal and have to reproduce, you know, mm -hmm. uh, there's genealogy and evolution and yeah. Don't all look the same all the time, especially not over thousands of years. And in the books, it sure felt like that's what Tolkien was saying. Felt like that's what Tolkien was saying. You know where you can find out what Tolkien said and you don't have to just think what he felt like? 
Just what? read what Tolkien said. What? You can do that? Yeah. Just imagine it though, right? Imagine getting that as an explanation if you're a hobbit, right, mm. and your wife gives birth to a black hobbit. <laughs> Compare that to reality. Right, uh, we can use, like, they can use that. Look, this isn't what Tolkien said, but it felt like what he was saying. It's like, they are, you know, you change anything, yeah, that excuse me, it felt like what he was saying. That's, that's their loyalty to the source material. They don't give a crap. As long as it feels like it, yeah. they're ascribing whatever they want and putting words in Tolkien's mouth, essentially, to achieve their own own depiction, their right. own interpretation. Is there a Hobbit story in the Second Age, J.D.? Uh, because, uh, well, it's actually not technically a Hobbit story, it's a Harfoot story. No, no, it's, it's, it's a, a Hobbit story. Like They're wandering Hobbits. They're wandering Hobbits. You didn't make them look... The only, the only difference you made them was making, you know, one appear black. But if you were to take that away, you made them exactly the same. Mm. Feet, matchy hair, and, size. And also... Clothes. Yeah, and also, right... Actually, um, the clothes are different. Really? Yeah, yeah. that... They, they, Hobbits oh. wear very kind of like, you know, suit-like clothes, like shirts, vests. And yeah, no, good and, point, good mm. point. But they wear cloaks as well, but, and they have the walking sticks. Mm. But um, he says that they're ancestors, right? Now, we know for a fact that he moved up. They're like 2,000 years after they were actually a thing. Mm -hmm. And they're only separated from the, um, the Hobbits by 4,000 years. So evolutionarily speaking, they're not really that far as our ancestors go. Yeah, it's a Hobbit story. Yeah. Uh, they're purposely forcing the Halfwits in because they think, oh, to be recognised as Lord of the Rings, we need Hobbits. Mm. Yeah, but they try to like, it's a cope. It's a lying sidestep, doesn't it? It's like, oh, it's, it's, a, it's not Hobbits, it's Halfwits. They're effectively Hobbits. And why are they called Halfwits if their feet are massive? Um, and so uh, Tolkien doesn't say anything about, about uh, Harfoots not having done anything amazing in the Second Age. He says that the uh, Hobbits... Like, like uh, listen to you. Tolkien didn't, didn't say that. there wasn't there, so we can inject... He didn't say that there's going to be a dragon riding a tricycle delivering papers and chocolate chip cookies. Throw it in there. I'd watch that. Dude, that is a crazy I want a dragon to deliver chocolate chip cookies to my door. Yeah, but you know how he does it? He walks up and he's... On a tricycle. No, he walks up and he pulls out a roll of cookie dough, slices it, and he's like... <sighs> oh. That would be... I want, that as, I want that as a grandma. Yeah. But, but guess what? <laughs> Tolkien, he didn't say it didn't happen, mm. so... Put it, throw it in there. That's their legit, legitimate sentiment. It's come up twice. They're using that as the excuse. Tolkien didn't say not, so therefore we can do it. Mm. Utter bullcrap. Uh, Tolkien doesn't say anything about, about uh, Harfoot's not having done anything amazing. He doesn't say it. So we can... <sighs> the second age, he says that the hobbits before the third age didn't do anything. How can you imply something or make a judgment on what someone meant based on what they didn't say. I know, it's bullcrap. It's utter yeah. bullcrap what they're doing. If they had been honest and said, mm. oh, uh, we felt like we could take certain artistic liber liberties specifically because Tolkien didn't have anything here. Not, we thought we could take artistic liberties because Tolkien didn't have anything here, but he meant this. Yeah, we feel like that's what he was saying. Yeah, that's wrong, but to say, oh, because he didn't say it, so we thought we could fill I, it I still in. think it's wrong taking artistic liberties in the areas that Tolkien has spoken on when there was all these things which he did speak on, that they mm. could have remained true to and given us. Yeah. Okay? But they think they're better than Tolkien because they can create a story that the fans will like more, but actually, no, they don't, they think Tolkien's problematic mm. and they need to write a story that is more representative of their agenda and uh, and that's what they want. Yeah, and they think our ill will against their creation comes from racism and sexism. Well, we're the ones not judging that as a... As a value, as a, as a thing, right? Yeah. We're doing, we're, we're, we have ill will towards. They your legitimately creation. think their work is better because of race, yeah. which is an inherent racist notion. Exactly, right? And so the reason we th have ill will towards you is because you keep light you keep ga gaslighting us. Yeah. We didn't, we didn't say, oh, why is, why are the Haradrim darker skinned? Why, why are the Corsairs, uh, you yeah. know, uh, Caucasoid, not Caucasoid, uh, Asian, you know? We didn't say it then because it, because it, made sense for the story. It wasn't political. So we thought we had license there to, to, uh, to go ahead and tell a good Harfoot story. But we have license to just make up our own crap. Well, technically, they, legally they have the license, but they don't have... They no, don't... They're, they're saying that like um, like metaphorical spiritual allowance, that Tolkien oh, would okay. be okay with it, is what they're trying to imply. Lindsay, ben, can't... Oh, you, sorry, go oh, ahead. Just quickly, I just want to say, you know, it, it was really important to us from minute one that what makes Tolkien's tone unique and special is the blend of all of these cultures and what each of them bring to Middle-earth and what each of them represent. 
but they're, they're specifically not blended together. Middle Earth isn't a melting pot. Like, look at all of the orcs live in Mordor where the shadows there lie. There is distinct racial tension in Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Look at elves and dwarves. Yeah, or even men and elves. Like, or even men and men. Every, like, damn men, they ruin Middle Earth. That what makes Tolkien's tone unique and special is the blend of all of these cultures and what each of them bring to Middle Earth and what each of them represent. The underdogs and the smallest people being able to do great deeds. We could not imagine a version of this show that didn't have a version of that in some form. Really? So what he's saying, because the Lord of the Rings story, right, mm. had a tone of the underdog small you know, people doing great things, he, they now cannot imagine a Lord of the Rings story without that tone. Screw what the Silmarillion was trying to say in its own story and narrative. They need to inject now a story of small people doing big things because they think it can't be separated from any other view of Middle Earth in any other period of history. Well, I just, I actually, I actually kind of agree with them, to be honest. I disagree completely. I think that if if an artist has bought out something before and you're going to base your work on them, you owe it to try and represent no, but the this things is, they did. This is based on a different period of this world telling a different story. Yeah, but it's closer, it's closer to Middle Earth than it is to the Silmarillion. What, what well, oh, wait, well, I mean, like, the Silmarillion follows a massive amount of time. Yeah, yeah, and there's stories in it that would have filled the show up completely. They don't have the Silmarillion, but they have enough stuff that they could have worked with, right, mm. to tell a story. To say that every single story of Middle-earth in all history needs to now have an injected, you know, part of it of yeah. a small person a doing story. big things. No, that story was great for Lord of the Rings. It was meant for that time and period. These are its own stories mm. based on a different period. And they're saying we now have to reinterpret and force in. However, so. however, I think maybe um, the Silmarillions are based on the Silmarillion stones. They're their own thing, right? And just like Lord of the Rings is based on the ring, Rings of Power is more tied mm. to the ring than it would be to the Silmarillion. Sure, there's historical stuff they could get from the yeah, Silmarillion, yeah, but, but because it's more closely tied to the Lord of the they're Rings. They're saying, like, there wasn't a story of small people doing great things, to my knowledge, in the accounts of the creation of the Rings of Power. Probably not, well, apart from the dwarves. <laughs> but now they're injecting hobbits into it because they think you can't have a Lord of the Rings story without it. Lindsay, can you confirm or deny that the female dwarves depicted in this series have beards? I can confirm that they have facial hair, yes. I was there at 3 o'clock in the morning. Except the Queen. Except, Except the Queen? Yeah, we've seen literal close-up shots. Smooth as a baby queen. bum. The Queen. Oh, I thought she she's, was a princess. No, she's a queen. She's a queen. Um, so this is a complete... Bull crap, lying she, straight to our face. Shapes. We've seen pictures. Yeah, but that's that's the thing. Dwarves typically don't shave. In fact, the wait. But what about um? Is it Killy, the 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 elf, the dwarf who falls in love with the um, attractive one? Yeah, the attractive dwarf who does. He's got a stubble, less but facial hair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like still. The thing is though. How the gall to be able to say this when you've released images mm. of her showing her completely beardless? Are you, what are they going to add it in post real quickly now? To just I don't think so. Prove themselves not liars. Hey, can I ask you though? What's your opinion on um? Because in uh, the Hobbit, they injected a ton of stuff that wasn't in the Hobbit. What do you think about that sort of stuff? What do you mean? Legolas. Like, like uh, Legolas and um. But you do the Hobbit movies are awful. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, that was the question basically. <laughs> there you go. Like, um, if they just stuck to the story and be true to it, um, I don't mind. Look, look, I actually don't mind if you do try and fill it out, okay? As long as it's not forced, all right? Mm. Um, and uh, the, the the main thing is the fans want the story interpreted as accurate as possible. Mm. Give them that. And once you give them that, is there room to experiment and add more to the story because of adaptation? Maybe. But you said that. But you would only dare shouldn't. do that if you have the talent to pull it off. But you, before you said uh, you should go back to the source material and do what the artist, the yeah, original yeah, artist, wanted. Yeah, want. consistent with that. Yeah, but like, uh, how do you fill in if the artist didn't do that? If, well, there, if there are holes? How no, do you no, how, how do you fill it in? Yeah, you can take inspiration from other areas, but you know what they're doing? What? They are choosing not to tell parts of Tolkien's story to be able to fill it in with crap they're making up. That's what's wrong. Okay. Okay. And part of the crap that they want to make up, we need to have our Hobbit story because they can't imagine a Lord of the Rings story without a Hobbit story. It's like, guess what? You're cutting story that Tolkien wrote to inject stuff that he didn't intend for this period in time. Okay. I guess we'd have to figure out mm. who were the closest relatives that were around in that time to the Hobbits. Doesn't matter. Though, that, uh, Tolkien didn't write much about the Harvest and everything because they were irrelevant for the important events that were happening right now. But that's in that period. But that's the question, though. Like the Hobbit, the the 
ancestors of the hobbits did exist then. Yeah, and so, and so at most would have been interesting to maybe see a small cameo. They're there, because that's a, almost the attention that Tolkien was willing to give him for this, because what was actually happening during this period was really important stuff that didn't concern the half foots of Hobbits. It wasn't concerning Hobbits? It wasn't. It literally wasn't. They weren't the main players or important rock players of this story. And they did talk about that before. These guys literally said it. That, uh, he said, this dude said mm. that um, uh, Tolkien wrote that the Hobbits didn't do anything big in that time. Exactly. It's not about them. But then his excuse was, uh, but these are half foots, not Hobbits. See, it's bullcrap. It's bullcrap yeah. what they're doing, and they're choosing not to tell the actual important story of this period in Middle mm. Earth to inject... Uh, 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 the Hobbits because uh, Lord of the Rings was popular and it had Hobbits in, so we'll do the same. Well, to be f just because the Hobbits didn't do anything big doesn't mean they can't be a part of the story in some way. Like I said, give them a cameo. Hey, the ancestors of Hobbits, look at them. Now let's get back to the Rings of Power, the actual story of the forging of the rings. Mm. Uh, okay, uh, last one. This is, a, this is a jump ball. Will there be Antwives? Maybe you've seen one already. <laughs> I don't mind if Entwives actually appear because they were referenced and they went missing and so that would actually be... But as just kind of like a cameo thing, hey, look at Entwives, this possible thing happens with them because remember they go missing in the end, forget what, you know. It felt it. like they went missing a lot. As long as Tolkien doesn't have a written down thing of what happened to Entwives in at a specific... If it doesn't contradict lore, I'd be okay with it, mm. okay? But if... Um, and wives are not supposed to appear or have reference or the them going missing in this actual period of time, then I'd have an issue with it. It so. felt like they went missing long before this era of time because mm -hmm. the Ents are old and even even Treebeard's like, we lost them. Yeah, young Master Gandalf. <laughs> yeah, young Master Gandalf. Oh, man. Oh, boy. So that's um even that's not even all the interviews that's been happening. And it's just full of, of crap upon crap. Look... I've got to be honest, though, mm -hmm. like, I'm not excited for this thing, okay? Because yeah. I agree with 19% of everything that the internet is saying about it, you know, that mm -hmm. just doesn't like it. But I'm hating these people less the more I see them. I, I don't see them as deliberately trying to sabotage or even that they don't like Tolkien. I think that they're just misguided or forced to do it. For yeah, the thing is, though, I feel they're being intentional and purposeful about injecting their version of diversity and yeah yeah no yet. no doubt and that is something to be uh, considered vile they shouldn't be doing that this is not their work they're not respecting tolkien properly mm. okay and so i, I agree with that but mm -hmm. I, I just i find myself not hating them i mean hating they're, them they're not they're not as outwardly uh, dis, uh spiteful so far of the work and the fans as Rafe Judkins is, but they are. Oh, Rafe Judkins. But they are rafing Lord of the Rings. Mm, are they rafing it? Yeah. I think they're corru they're corrupting it, but I wouldn't say that's rafing. I no. rafing is a, is its own thing. Rafing is is out of active spite. You feel R rafing is yes, because if you didn't know, we'll say it. Uh, Rafe Judkins, who's running the Wheel of Time show, said on Twitter, "Oh, you're you don't like that I've done a certain thing. Okay, well I'm going to turn your favorite character's gay to spite mm. you." And look, we know the full context of what led him to that, and uh, doesn't excuse it. Read the we have a video um, on Wheel of Time. Go watch those if you want to know uh, the thing, mm. because he was actually using it as example of how he deals with objections from the fan base generally. Yeah. And it, he was expressing a general sentiment, something that he has fulfilled. He literally has done it. What he said he threatened to do, he did do out of spite. Mm. Okay? That's what makes Rafe so awful. I tell you what, though, they are being successful in what they're trying to do, which I don't like. And the, this, they're, they're trying to normalise certain political things. Mm. They're, they're hoping that eventually we're just, we get tired of recognising these things that we don't like, because we do see it. And that we eventually just like, oh, you know what, fine, I'll just focus on things I do like. And that's what's happening with me. Mm -hmm. I'm realising it. I'm just like, I'm I'm so tired of having to, you know, I'm, I'm tired of picking the nits out of the monkey, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, I'm just like, fine, I'll just eat them. <laughs> Don't eat them. <laughs> yeah. uh, but... Do they taste good? No, <laughs> but it's something. Well, don't worry. You'll get used to it. Mm. That's what they <laughs> hope and I don't like it. <laughs> and that's why you must always stay on watch.